how does Avastin, also known as Bevacizumab, um, how does it work? So Avastin, I think, is, is really one of the most important cancer drugs at the moment. Um, this video is going to be a kind of a non-technical uh, explanation of how it works. By non-technical, I mean probably quite a lot of what I say will be incorrect, but may give you a rough idea. Um, so Avastin works probably in several ways. And it may be that with different types or different stages of cancer, it works in different ways. One of the key ways it works is as an angiogenesis inhibitor. So angiogenesis is the process by which new blood vessels are formed. So, you know, in, in our body, we've got three types of blood vessels. So you've got capillaries, which are those really thin ones. Um, there are veins which go towards the heart, carry blood towards the heart, and uh, arteries that carry blood from the heart to the various organs. And you know, your organs are yeah, supplied blood by those arteries, carries the oxygen in, and the veins carry away the deoxygen deoxygenated blood back to the heart. Um, with the exception of the liver, where the liver gets its blood supply from both a vein and an artery. Um, which is one of the reasons why cancer tends to spread to the liver. So um, cells need to be within, I think it's three cells of a blood supply. Um, if not, then they don't have enough oxygen, they get hypoxia and die, um, or at least function very badly. So as cancer tumours get bigger, they're going to need blood supplies um, because the inside part of the tumour is going to be a lot more than three cells away from the nearest blood supply. So cancer tumours have to induce angiogenesis um, so they will cause the release of um, vascular well, I can't remember what the E is I did note it down actually vascular endothelial growth factor so growth factor is like a trigger to make something happen um, and it's um, released and then it will be picked up by the VEGF receptors um, and you'll get blood vessels growing. Um, with cancer the new blood vessels are like this tangled mass of nastiness. Um, cancer tumours are characterised by a, a raggedy edge um, because it's desperately trying to find more blood supplies and Avastin is one of the drugs that um, inhibits angiogenesis. Um, so there are two ways it can be um, inhibited. So one way is blocking the receptor. Um, Avastin works in the other way, which is to kind of attach on to this VEGF to stop it getting to the receptor. Um, now when angiogenesis inhibitors were kind of first proposed and, and um, made experimentally in the 70s. People were thinking like, oh, this is going to be amazing and we'll just stop cancer completely because it stopped the blood supplies and um, the tumours are going to die, right? Um, the reality is that, um, yeah, doesn't really seem to work like that. Uh, cancers have multiple ways to get round um, angiogenesis, angiogenesis inhibitors. Um, they can, um, I mean, for example, the cancer tumours can shape themselves around blood vessels. They can even shape themselves, like with channels in, kind of forming blood, 
vessels. Um, it's even been found that they can actually differentiate themselves and become um, blood vessels. Um, so there are multiple ways of, of working. So the miraculous effects of angiogenesis inhibitors uh, haven't come around. Now, Avastin is just one of kind of three main ones, um, but there are many others as well. So why did I say Avastin is such an important drug? Well, Avastin seems to help chemotherapy work better um, for loads of different cancers and loads of different kinds of chemotherapy. So in Japan, where I am, um, yeah, if possible, patients are given Avastin along with, with the other treatment um, because although it's an expensive drug, it just does seem to help um, the outcome is better. So in Japan, they said it's, it's plus alpha for uh, like chemotherapy. Um, the mechanism, well, there's several proposed mechanisms for that. Um, and as I said, like the mechanism of how Avastin works may be different for late stage cancers or it may have several different mechanisms but for late stage cancers like a certain mechanism is more significant um so it may be that the avastin uh, makes holes in the cancer cell membrane and that lets more chemo drug in i think that's kind of one of the favorite ideas i don't know if that's a theory or if it's been kind of seen on an electron microscope or something um it could also be that avastin kind of guides the chemotherapy molecule across the cell membrane um i know in like science textbook cell membrane is drawn as like a wiggly black line around the cell um that's not what a cell membrane is um a cell membrane is like a double layer of sliding slipping proteins that selectively allow stuff in either direction um it's a super sophisticated thing and it may be that avastin is able to kind of guide the chemotherapy drug in um anyway avastin is an absolutely vital uh cancer drug um it does unfortunately have um side effects you often hear oncologists saying Avastin is well tolerated by most patients and that is true um, you generally get some fatigue maybe an upset stomach um, a serious side effect is holes could appear in your body particularly um, in your nose like a in the like the dividing bit of your nose which I think is called the septum um, so that would be really nasty that's a a rare side effect um you could get holes in your intestines rare but very serious um i was told that the risk factor for that like the risk doesn't increase with um like how long you use avastin for so it's not like you know it will one day become dangerous for you it's not like that um, but one risk factor is uh, if you've got cancer in your abdominal membrane, your peritoneum. Um, but another side effect that everyone gets, and that is a really big deal if you're on Avastin for extended periods of time, like I have been, and that's that it's an angiogenesis inhibitor, so it's stopping new blood vessels being formed, and new blood vessel formation angiogenesis is a very very crucial bit of wound healing so um yeah that's really uh frustrating and potentially dangerous that you know when you get little cuts or whatever or a more serious wound avastin will interfere with the healing process that also means that you um need to stop avastin like a certain amount of time before surgery 
and you can only restart at a certain amount of time after surgery. The thinking on that, well, it, it is essential, but the length of time is going to be based on like the opinion of the surgeon and the hospital policy. Um, I think according to the maker of Avastin, you should stop Avastin two weeks before um, all the surgeons I've talked to in Japan say four weeks before is essential. Um, and th when I pushed one of them on this and pointed out the drug guidelines were different, uh, he said they knew from experience um, and and like the early trials that there were wound healing issues if you didn't stop Avastin four weeks before and then you're going to restart it a couple of weeks after, um, assuming the surgical wounds are healing up fine. If there are any issues, the surgeon is going to say no chemo, no Avastin for you for a while. Um, oh, one side effect I should really point out, um, you get a runny nose a lot with Avastin, but you also get nasal bleeding, so like nosebleeds. Um, and that's often just an everyday thing. Small nose bleeds every single day when you're on Avastin. Um, so if you have questions about Avastin, um, please reply or any information or advice on Avastin. Um, yep, yeah, post a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks a lot.